I'm Todd Sampson, adventurer and human guinea pig. <laughs> wow, I feel really sick to my stomach. And I'm on a mission to investigate some of the most extraordinary people on the planet. That's a workout. To see what we can all learn from their lives. Holy, oh, that is a fire! fire! To try and understand them, I'll not only walk in their shoes, Stress levels are going through the roof. I'll hack into their world using science as my guide. This series is a quest to explore our human potential. <laughs> and to ultimately prove the mind and body can adapt to almost anything. In this episode, I'm in a land frozen in time, Mongolia. Temperatures here can plummet to minus 40 degrees. Yet the Kazakh eagle hunters have survived and thrived here for thousands of years. I'll discover how their bodies have adapted to such brutal conditions. What are the golden rules of surviving in the cold? Don't get wet. And how their existence depends on a truly remarkable alliance with animals. <laughs> I've come to one of the most remote places on Earth to live with one of humankind's oldest nomadic cultures, the Kazakhs of Mongolia. These rolling hills are one of the places where humans first began to domesticate wild animals 14,000 years ago. And to this day, the Kazakhs still herd animals across hundreds of kilometers living in traditional tents called gurs. Oh. <laughs> I'm here to learn from their unique way of life. Wow, look at that. That is so hard to do. Incredible. And I'll attempt to bond with one of nature's most impressive birds of prey. That was a potential bite there. She's incredibly strong. It'll take a bit of getting used to, I think. Mongolia is a land that's held its own. It's had to. Squeezed between two of the world's superpowers, Russia to the north and China to the south. The size of Britain, France, Germany, and Italy combined, in the warmer months, this is the planet's largest expanse of grazing land. Where I'm headed is to the far west, a 1,700-kilometer journey from the capital, Ulaanbaatar. My guide to life in this sub-zero world is 27-year-old Essen. Bizden Kazak tözümde mi anday karga, karjastan up muzda söyün koşup konup. Bizden kısa ve ne bu kratın arca aslında. Okay, let's go. Civilizations have been built off the back of horses. But somehow we've forgotten about them with the mechanization of society. These Mongolian horses are legendary. They may look short and stout, but they're built for this harsh environment. They can carry up to 30% of their body weight and have developed thick coats to keep them warm in sub-zero temperatures. And they're excellent on the snow. The Kazakhs' way of life has changed very little in over 3,000 years. Essen lives with his extended family, his father, mother, wife, two children, and two brothers. It's a great pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. There's one more member of the family I'm keen to meet. Wow, Essen, beautiful. What's her name? Kernik. Kernik. Kernik will be my responsibility for the duration of my stay. I've never been this close to an eagle. 
Wow, it's both scary and good. In my time with the Kazakhs, I want to explore their bond with animals. And hopefully, I'll get a chance to train and hunt with this beautiful golden eagle. My visit here is in late winter, which is known as White Month. The golden eagle's massive two-meter wingspan, keen eyesight, vice-like talons, and razor-sharp beak make it a superbly designed killing machine. As seen here with this fox training pelt. The Kazakhs don't hunt for food or sport, but for coveted fox fur, which they use to protect themselves from the brutal winter temperatures. Rugging up in warm clothes when it's cold seems like an obvious thing to do. But clothing was actually the giant evolutionary leap that helped humans survive in cooler latitudes. That's because we evolved in the heat of the tropics of Africa. We're simply not designed to survive in the ice. Humans are incredibly inefficient when it comes to the cold. It's currently about minus 20 here. My normal core body temperature is 37. If that temperature drops to 33, my thermal regulatory system fails. And at 25, I die. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to derobe. We can see it firsthand. When we're subjected to cold, our bodies trigger a chain reaction of responses in a bid to preserve vital heat. First, we form goosebumps, which are actually a hangover from the days we had fur. Basically, what's happening is the hairs are standing erect. The muscles at the bottom are contracting, which forms the bump. This would have trapped an insulating layer of warm air in our ancestors' fur. But now, our scant body hair makes this response redundant. The second reaction is called vasoconstriction. It's when the body shuts down the blood supply to our extremities and redirects it to where it's really needed. The results can be seen with a thermal camera, which shows how dramatically my fingers are cooling compared to my chest. Basically, what's happening now is the blood vessels are constricting to shunt the blood to my core to protect my heart and all the vital organs. And as a result, I can feel my fingertips numbing. That system is so brutal for survival, it would be willing to kill off these limbs to protect the core. And thirdly, after standing in the cold for 20 minutes, I'll start to shiver. Now, shivering is the nerve impulses being sent to my muscles, getting them to contract to try and generate some heat. That shivering will increase my metabolic rate by roughly six times that of resting. When you start to shiver, your cerebral cortex is telling you, and is telling me now, curl up into a ball and go inside. I'm gonna listen to my cerebral cortex. Wow, this is freezing. Feeble as our cold defenses are, they're virtually all we have. And it's why hunting for fox pelt is so important to the Kazakhs' lives. Essen wants to begin the process of bonding me with Turnik, whose hood stays on until it's time for action. It's such a privilege to be a part of this. There's only roughly 70 active eagle hunters around today. And Essen is a master. Yes, you can Wow, I have to say I'm a little bit nervous. This is a very large <sighs> bird of prey <laughs> just sitting right <laughs> next to my face. Yes, slap, up. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> is she a good hunter, Essen? Just thanks. I'm glad him. How heavy is she? Six kilo. Eight kilo. Yeah. You just get the feeling that she is sensing me. She's smelling and coming close to me. 
Thinking who is that person? <laughs> Female golden eagles are bigger and stronger than males, and their maternal instinct makes them more aggressive when seeking prey, which is why the Kazakhs prefer to hunt with them. <laughs> yes, she smells good. So beautiful. It's all about trying to create a bond between the two of us. To be a successful hunter, it's essential we form a close attachment. Easier said than done. They leave the mask on because it keeps her calm. And now they want to take the mask off. I just have this feeling she's going to rip my face apart. But OK, off. Yeah. Removing Turnick's hood off. is like taking the safety off a lethal weapon. Oh, come on, sweetie. Yeah. Oh. So I have to learn to put the mask on and off and to do it at the exact time when the fox starts to run. If you get it wrong, she won't go anywhere. Max, Jesus. No, oh, I don't know about this part. This is because... Ooh, she's not liking that. Yep, sorry, sweetie. It's going back on. Oh. She's not. Oh. Keep kissing on some things. OK. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like that. That was our first little little confrontation we've had. Like many relationships, this one's going to take some work. The Kazakhs have lived in Gurs for as long as anyone can remember. And they come with strict rules. Well, the first thing you feel when you come in here is how warm and welcoming it is. Gurs are designed for the Kazakh's nomadic lifestyle. Easily transportable, the families will move twice each year with the seasons. The girls are the focus of the Kazakhs' important custom of hospitality. Any stranger from anywhere traveling can stop in a girl and they will be taken in as part of the family. They'll be fed and they'll be able to sleep there. It's incredible, really. Altruism is rare in other species, but human generosity evolved in unpredictable times as a form of social insurance. The Kazakhs expect their hospitality to be returned. Because you never know when a bad day is going to come. And by being generous to all those around you, in some ways you've insured yourself for reciprocal altruism. Dotted across the vast, harsh landscape, each gur is like a lifeboat. And when it comes to table etiquette, the noisier, the better. <laughs> I've been told most of my life not to slurp your drinks, and this is part of Kazakh culture. It's uh, great. The bigger the slurp, the better. Progress. <laughs> <laughs> Essen and his family herd over a thousand animals, mostly sheep, goats, and horses. But also something unexpected. This camel is quite unique to this part of the world. It's a double humpback camel. It weighs approximately 500 kilograms. It can carry up to 40% of its body weight a long way. We're going to use it to collect ice that we will melt down for water. I don't think he likes the loading part or the stick driven through his nose, which is used for steering. <laughs> He's not happy. <laughs> this camel train will haul back the family's most precious resource. Humans can survive three weeks without food, but only three days without water.
This river is completely frozen. It's a lot of work to get something to drink. One of the dangers of ice collecting on the river is getting wet. Wet clothing can be deadly as it conducts heat away from the body 22 times faster than air. One of the golden rules of surviving in the cold, and the Kazakhs know it very well, don't get wet. At minus 20, carving out chunks of ice is bitter work, but the Kazakhs don't seem to mind. That's because they're the helping hand from evolution. The Kazakhs have three major adaptations that allow them to thrive in this environment. The first one is a blunted shivering response. They basically shiver a lot less. This suggests the Kazakhs can withstand a lower core body temperature before they waste precious energy on shivering. Secondly, they have a higher body thermostat. They generate more heat internally. Compared to people from warmer countries, cold climate inhabitants can increase their metabolic rate by as much as 40%. This is fueled by their high protein, high fat diet. And thirdly, they have a higher rate of blood flow, particularly to their peripherals. That allows the Kazakhs to work with their hands in sub-zero temperatures, with a lower risk of getting frostbite and hypothermia. When your core body temperature drops below 35 degrees, hypothermia starts. This process involves the slowing of the electrical impulses in your brain and heart, and your mental functions decline, and ultimately you can have cardiac arrest. I actually had hypothermia. It was a terrible, one of the worst experiences in my life. I needed to be hospitalized because of it. When you're in this brutal environment and at risk of hypothermia the whole time, you appreciate warmth. Cutting this ice is really tiring. And I said, does anyone have any water? And Essen handed me this. <laughs> Go figure. Almost every moment of the Kazakhs' day is structured around the lives of the herd. This cow doesn't like me around. Every culture that I've visited women seem to do a disproportionate amount of the work. They're constantly in motion, and the Kazakhs are no exception. The men's job is to herd the animals and protect them from predators. Herding the animals is one of the most important tasks for the Kazakh. They have to get them in, corralled, because at night, the wolves come. It's great how he has all these different sounds. And literally, he makes the sound, and the animal moves in all the different directions. Good form of communication. Nomadic life means humans and animals depend on each other. In this land without fences, animals are free to go, but they remain. For the Kazakhs, certain animals take on an extra special significance. Some horses and cattle are seen as spiritual protectors. The Kazakhs call these animals Setters. With the nearest hospital several hours away, setters are seen as a type of nomadic health care. They believe, for example, if Grandpa got sick, that this horse, his setter, would try and take it away from him. The Kazakhs consider setters to be more powerful than humans. Here, 
animals really are seen as partners in life. Today's lesson is how to release Turnic once we've spotted prey. For practice, we're using a fox pelt. But on an actual hunt, the fox may be more than a kilometer away, which is difficult to see with the naked eye, but not for the eagle hunters. The Kazakhs are known for their exceptional eyesight. Studies have now shown that exposure to long viewing distances and bright light not only protects your eyes, but can help prevent myopia. To help prevent short-sightedness, it's recommended we expose our eyes to at least three hours of sunlight each day. Especially so for children, as our eyes don't stop developing until we're in our 30s. This is my first release. When it comes to giving the command to fly, it's important to get the tone of voice just right. Try as I might, Turnic refuses to budge. It's time for a familiar voice. And that's how it's done. That was awesome. Turnick is rewarded with fresh meat. Oh, oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Hold on. No, no, no. no? Yeah. Oh, the grip is incredible. It's like ripping my hand apart. The talons of golden eagles have enormous strength, as much as 750 pounds per square inch, which is 37 times more powerful than a human's grip. That's it. She's too strong. I can't even hold it. To regain control, it's important I now put the hood back on before she mistakes my hand for the treat. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. Oh, that was my best one. Okay, good girl. Animal training is all about repetition. And Turnic becoming used to my voice. Gradually, she begins to pay attention. And finally, she responds to my call. Well, not quite. Well, that time she left to my voice, but she went in a totally different direction. She missed the fox and just flew away. We don't quite know where she is now. After Turnick eventually flies back, Essen wants to take my training a step further, from releasing to catching, which means enticing her with bait. I'm in Mongolia with a dead fox, and I'm going to try and get an eight kilo female eagle to fly down and land on my arm. In this human animal relationship, the bird knows who's boss. One of nature's most deadly predators now flies at speed towards me. At least she's now following my voice. Oh. Oh. Good girl. Oh, cheek it easy. No, grab the other side. Oh. Good girl. 
Very good. Wow, that was incredible just to see her coming at me. Good girl. Good girl. That was step two of my training, catch and release. It wasn't easy, but I think we're getting used to each other now. Such a privilege to be here. Church. Church. Essen insists I can't come all this way to Mongolia and not attempt what is a national obsession. <laughs> Wrestling is considered to be one of Mongolia's three manly games, the others being horse racing and archery. Oh, yes. Mongolian wrestling traces back thousands of years as a way of training the Mongolian warriors. The rules are simple. Just bring any part of your opponent's back, elbow, or knee to the ground, and you win. Okay, I think that's gonna be the end. <laughs> okay, I might take a break. I'll have a rest. He's a good wrestler. He's so tiring up here. <laughs> this part of Mongolia is more than two kilometers above sea level, which makes any kind of physical activity much harder. But it also generates all important body heat. And cold weather exercise can release a double dose of happy neurotransmitters, serotonin and norepinephrine. Oh. Oh. But winter workouts also have their dangers. While exercising in the cold, it's certainly good to bring up your core temperature and make you warmer. The danger is you can slow cool. And slow cooling is a little bit of sweat that brings down your core temperature without you actually noticing. And that can cause hypothermia. You don't need to wrestle like a Mongolian to be at risk. Hikers can also slow cool. A tip is to wear breathable materials, or do as the Kazakhs do, and wear clothes with vents to flush out humidity. Traditionally, in Mongolian culture, the winner of the match would then put his flag in the ground and they would dance around it like a bird. I'm learning that like the monochromatic landscape, nomadic life is full of contrasts. Cold and warmth, joy and pain, life and death. As we were taking the animals out this morning, Essen pulled aside one of the sheep. He then gave me this knife. I'm assuming that I'm gonna have to kill it for dinner. So this will be an experience, not one that I'm overly looking forward to. The Kazakhs consider it an honor to take an animal's life. I don't want to do it, but I'm here to experience their way of life, not pass judgment from my own. I've never wanted this knife to be as sharp as I want it to be right now. I do find it hard to reconcile the Kazakhs' close bond to animals with slaughtering them. But as they explained to me, 
Although in life, an animal is respected as an individual, in death, it's nourishment for everyone. A warning, you may want to look away now. Okay. I could feel in my hand when he died. Just let go. With the skill of a professional butcher, Essen immediately gets to work. It's about minus 20 here. This animal is so warm. It's, you can see the steam coming off. Living with the Kazakhs, you really get to understand their symbiotic relationship with animals, the herd and the environment around them. They're very efficient, practical people. And the herd sustains their life in this incredibly brutal but beautiful environment. Okay. Okay? Okay. What's incredible about that is we skin this entire animal without the meat actually touching the ground. And what we're left with here Trousers. While the women prepare the food, it's time for my last training session before the hunt. The next step of this process is I need to learn how to mount the horse with the eagle on my arm and then ride long distances. Stay still, Bluey. Oh. Oh. It wasn't graceful. But I got there. Whoa. Whoa. Now, the resourcefulness of the Kazakhs, for long distances, your arm would get very tired. So they've created a brace. So I can hold the eagle, and she doesn't get upset because she's bouncing around too much. That's it. What's the trick to riding with the eagle? The key to riding is to shift your own balance in time with the horse. But throw an eight kilo eagle into the mix and your center of gravity goes way off. The saddle seems to move a lot left to right and the eagle's weight is constantly moving. It requires a perfect harmony between man, eagle, and horse. Watching Essen fly across the land, you can see why. Wow, look at that. That is so hard to do. It's remarkable how much balance he has. He's able to hold on basically with two fingers with an eagle on his side at full gallop. Incredible core strength to hold him to the horse. Incredible. Riding with the eagle is exhilarating and I feel like a character in a real life Game of Thrones. I may not be able to gallop like Essen, but I'm hoping I'll be able to hold my own. Before the eagle hunt tomorrow, the family wants to celebrate my final night. So this meal is called a cerne, and it's for honored guests. And it's a privilege that I get to be here and be the honored guest. Cool. Oh, la, la. Ah. As a non-meat eater, this is always an interesting part for me. We killed this animal this morning, 
and now we're gonna eat it. The head is still in the middle uh, there. I'm not certain what we're doing with that, but. Are we eating that? Oh. Jaxsı kuradın kısını yezdüğünden beri koydun. Yani kulkun kıyılmasın. Dip. Although the thought of eating meat is not that appealing, I killed it, so I'm going to eat it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dam dikin. Dam dikin. Dam dikin. Well, that was, uh, that was definitely medium rare. Head. For most of us, this high-protein, high-fat diet would be dangerous. But the Kazakhs' turbocharged metabolism means they burn through calories much faster, which is what keeps them going in the cold. What is that? Jambas? Wow, oh, I'm really butchering that meat. I feel sorry for them. What is that? That's just fat. That's just straight fat. Well, I never thought I'd be eating this, but what's I don't know about that one. <laughs> I really do feel a part of this family. Kids, extended family, mom, dad, grandpa. It's, it's such a warm, inviting culture. And uh, they're renowned for their hospitality, but it's amazing to experience it firsthand. Thank you. After 10 days of bonding with my golden eagle, it's finally time to join the Kazakhs on a traditional hunt, which means dressing in special hunting furs. All the training comes down to this. Wow, this is some intense riding. We've been tracking foxes for hours now. We finally found some fresh prints. After such a long haul in the saddle, just reaching the ridge feels like an achievement. And it's from up here, Turnick will be expected to see and pursue her prey in the valley below. What makes this eagle such an excellent hunter is eyesight. Her eyes are eight times the acuity of humans. She can spot a fox from two kilometers away which is the same as humans identifying an ant from the roof of a 10-story building. Essen has invited more hunters from neighboring families. The sight of these horsemen is something I'll never forget. The group forms a team, primary falconer, secondary falconer, and beaters. We're only here for a few moments when Essen spots movement. A fox. It's the beater's job to flush it into the open. Yeah. 
as the primary falconer, I have to release Turnick's hood at just the right time and give the command to launch. So far, this hasn't been my strong point. We now have to get the eagle off the fox as quickly as possible, so it doesn't suffer and the fur isn't damaged. It's just a matter of time. I'm happy for her, but I... I also feel for the fox. It's a beautiful creature. Yeah, I know this is hard to watch, but this is what we came here for, and this is what this golden eagle is trained to do. The Kazakhs do not hunt for sport. They don't hunt for fun. They hunt for fur to help keep them warm in the sub-zero temperatures. This truly remarkable human-animal alliance has allowed the Kazakhs to survive here for thousands of years. The tradition of hunting foxes with golden eagles, it's been passed from generation to generation. Grandpa passed it down to his son, Essen, and Essen is passing it down to his son. Well, and hopefully that tradition will continue for another thousand years. It's been incredible to experience the Kazakh way of life. <laughs> Was it the eagle hunting that uh, attracted you to Essen? <laughs> <laughs> the thing I'll remember most is their incredible bond with the animals. I'm really gonna, I'm really gonna miss her. They've taken me in as part of their family, and I really feel like Essen and I are now brothers. Thank you, Essen Krochnet. Yeah. <laughs>